Hey, skiers. I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. And I'm Bob. Happy Friday. Welcome back to our Top 5 Friday Ski Industry News videos. Hope you all had a fantastic week. Um, we put those two comparison videos out this week. Yep, those are fun. Yeah, so a women's video went up on Tuesday. We looked at skis in the 100 millimeter range. And then yesterday we put up the men's front side video and we decided to condense front side a little bit this year. Yeah. I thought it was a more interesting conversation. Right, and we could have put a lot more in that like 65 to 68, but right. there's just so much similarities there. Yeah. So right. it was nice to spread it out, I thought. I thought so too. Yeah. Hopefully you guys agree. Hopefully you found it interesting and informative too. Um, next week we'll have another men's comparison and we'll probably go go wide. Yep. Last week we asked you guys whether you wanted to see front side skis or powder skis and what I think it was like two to one ratio of front side to powder. So felt like we had to go in that direction. It was pretty convincing. Yep. Yep. So we'll do the next one next week. Um, and Bob, I don't think I have anything else to share before we get into the news. Do you? No, not particularly. I think we can do it. Let's do it. Um, so first two topics are very similar. Uh, ski racing, competitive skiing is here. Yeah, it's like winter. I feel like that's a good sign. That's what Matt said in the written top oh, really? article. <laughs> yeah, he said there's just one week a year where it just all of a sudden feels yeah. like it's ski season. And at least in his opinion, that week is this week. So FIS Alpine Ski Racing kicks off this weekend. We have women's giant slalom in Solden tomorrow. And then Sunday, we have men's giant slalom. Um, and the schedule changed a little bit this year. So starting this weekend, we have a FIS World Cup ski race every weekend uh, until like through the end of March. I think that's great for viewership. And I think it's awesome. Getting it pretty consistent. Yeah. So we used to have like a fair amount of weeks off, especially early season. Yeah. And now it's just going to be consistent ski racing. And like if you think about like the NFL and you're like, it's Sunday, it's football day. Right. You know, like in order for ski racing to be more popular from a viewer perspective, I think having that be consistent is big. Right. Because then you get in the mindset of like, oh, it's the weekend. Right. There's going to be ski racing ski race. to watch. Yeah. So I think that's really cool. Um, and you should be able to catch this weekend's action um, on NBC's Peacock. And throughout the season, we'll try and do our best of letting you guys know where you can watch the races. Yeah, I don't get to watch them. It's challenging sometimes, yeah. um, but that's that was one of the only reasons I used Peacock at all last season was to watch World Cup ski racing. I just have too many sub subscriptions. No, I know, I get it. You just they they really start adding up, yeah. don't they? And you're like, what? Oh, right, I have that. Right. When you get billed. Plus, I have just regular cable. Right. <laughs> well, anyways, if you want to check out the racing, um, look for the listing on Peacock, and then on the free skiing side. Uh, technically, we are already underway. Like now, right? Yeah, they might have started already. I checked the live scoring just before we started filming, and I don't, they hadn't posted any scores yet. But yeah. we could could be could be underway of the finals. Um, so the first big air of the year is right now in Switzerland. Um, interestingly, the U.S. didn't send really any of their top athletes. All five athletes that went were part of the rookie or the development team. And pretty cool that Troy Podmil Podmilzak. I saw that name. I was wondering how you were going to do it. I felt like I had to give it a go, <laughs> um, which is really fun for me because I try and keep at least a finger on the pulse yep. of the free skiing world. And I had not yet heard of Troy, which I, is only going to happen more and more in the coming years all these young kids popping up that i've never heard of yeah it's kids these days yeah but in a good way right these kids these days <laughs> um he took first in qualifiers so really exciting to see uh how he does in finals which like we said could be happening right now unfortunately there were some geo restrictions on the live stream and it didn't look like we we're gonna get get a live stream of this hmm. oh well we'll see the replays Special note, the other live stream going on right now is Red Bull Rampage. 
It is way too anxiety inducing for me to watch. Yeah, I think we watched what I watched like three runs. Yeah, and you said you were bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I think it's uh I totally know what you mean. Like it is like certain runs you watch it and like you're like white knuckling along with them. Yeah. I do think there are like certain paths down the mountain that kind of just look more like a slope style course. And that's, yeah, there was one that looked very slope style and I yeah. was kind of like, that ah, was, wasn't that exciting. I'm just like, I was like, just like squirming in my seat whenever I watched yeah. that, that event. The canyon gap and like the steep stuff, those yeah. are the things that really get my, get my blood pumping. Yeah. No, it's amazing. Um, so check that out. I'm going to wait until it's over. Try and avoid any results. So don't leave a comment of Red Bull <laughs> Rampage results and then watch the whole event in entirety. Um, and then third topic of the week. Uh, ski season is officially underway in the United States. So Andy's Tower Hills. I assume that's how you pronounce that. Uh, in Minnesota was the first ski hill to open in the United States. Pretty cool. They, I mean, it's been cold there, and they yeah. just got snow a couple of days ago, I think. Yeah, pretty so. cool. Um, Michigan's uh, UP picked up up to 18 inches in some spots. Yeah, some of that skiing looked pretty good. Got dumped on. Yep. Um, and then the Aspen region is expecting some significant snowfall this weekend. Uh, the reports that I saw were kind of hovering, hovering around like 14 inches, a foot to 14 inches. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty substantial snow yep. right there. And uh, contrasting that, it's going to be 65 and sunny here tomorrow. It's going to be beautiful. Yeah. Can't wait. So in a lot of years, Killington is able to open around this time of year. Yep. And I know they tried. They blew a little bit of snow, but I don't think there's any way that Killington will be opening. I don't know. We looked at the extended forecast, what, a couple of days ago? Yeah. Just doesn't look the next week or so doesn't look great for no. snowmaking. It looks a little warm. Yeah, just a little bit too yeah. warm. Maybe like going below freezing at night, but then it's like you're playing that balance game of like, is it just going to all melt? They don't seem scared of that. Killing it's below freezing, they're going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, fingers crossed that we'll be skiing here in New England, I'd say realistically within the next couple weeks. Yeah. But cool to see those Midwest mountains um, be the, the first in the, in the country to open. Um, and then this one was pretty cool. Crystal Mountain is offering a quiver pass, which gets you unlimited demos for the season. It's going to be $399, and they are claiming 67 models from 10 brands. Okay. Pretty cool. Yep. I think that's a really interesting idea. Yeah. We had some questions. Yep. Um, what would, like, availability? Are you guaranteed that that ski will be there? Right. Or someone like me that's always looking for the longest length. Right. Are my options more limited than yours? Yeah. And if you like, if you spend this and like you go three times in a row and they don't have the ski that you want, can right. you like, get a refund? I doubt it. Yeah. These places don't seem big on refunds. No. Um, but if you're going to like, say you're going to try 10 to 15 skis in a year and you really value that, I think it's a reasonable price. Yeah, and like, it's basically, you could see it as a year lease of demos, and right. then you don't have to buy a pair of skis. Well, that was the other thing that I was thinking, like, is there a limit to how much you can use it? Can you just go every day? Does it say unlimited on it? it, it I'm pretty sure that was the gist of it. Like, yeah. I, I also wonder, like, what the logistics are. Like, would you even want to do that every day? Does it, like, take too long to go and get your skis? Yeah, I don't know. I've also never skied Crystal Mountain, so I don't even know what the, like, where the demo shop is and stuff like that. Uh, best of my knowledge, it's all right, it's all right there. That there's not much else. So it'd be pretty efficient. Yeah. Going to get a pair of skis. I think so. Getting the slopes. Yep. I thought that was cool. Um, and it kind of, it gives people in the public uh, the opportunity to get closer and closer to what we get to do. Right. And then, you know, depending on the day, you know, but yeah. then again, if it snows two feet, how many powder skis are they going to have? Yeah, I don't know. You know, like That's those right. are going to sell out, yep. rent out, whatever. So, I don't know. I got questions about that. Yeah, but I think it's cool. Yep. Um, 
We'll just have to see if, if this becomes a thing. If other mountains kind of pick up similar policies. Right. You buy 70 pairs of skis and right. make and whoever buys pays 400 bucks for it, it's probably a pretty good revenue driver. Right. And uh, maybe gets you. people on, into the hill. So that'd be great. Um, and then lastly, we have our edits of the week. So first up, we have Black Diamond Presents Dawn Patrol. It's a really look at like the culture of those people that get up really early and go touring. I like to sleep a little bit. Yeah, me too. But it's big here. Yep, huge. There's a huge Dawn Patrol yep. up at Stowe. And it's funny how like Dawn Patrol means a different thing now, apparently. Right. Because Dawn Patrol used to refer to all the people that just got to the lift at 7.30 in the morning. It was Ski Patrol, too. Yeah. Like, they were, their first run would be Dawn Patrol. Right. But now, like, at Stowe, their first run is smashed out. Yeah, there's been, like, 150 people that yeah. skied that already. Right. Um, and then second edit of the week, we have Kai Jones. Uh, it's his Skier of the Year nominated segment from Magic Hour. Pretty phenomenal Young athlete. Yeah, pretty impressive stuff. It's been cool to watch him kind of grow up in the free skiing world. Right. And he sure has made a name for himself. I remember when they were like, eight-year-old Kai Jones yeah. skis the Grand Teton or whatever. Right. And you're like, oh, man, <laughs> right. where do you go from there? <laughs> Here. Yep. That's where he went <laughs> from there. Um, and then we have episode 37 out of 50 of The 50 Project with Cody Townsend. Um, his partner, Elise Sogstad. Uh, is a pretty big part of this one. So I thought that was really cool. I really like her skiing, and she's just got a great personality too. Um, great outlook on skiing and yeah. life and all that kind of stuff. So check that out. We know you guys really like those Cody Townsend edits. And then we have Psychoactive from Level 1, which was short film, um, really cool cinematography, some interesting skiing. Yep. Just leave it at that. All right. <laughs> so I think some people will really like this. I think other people will probably watch it and just kind of be like, huh? But that's generational skiing for you. Right. And they're trying new things. And I like it when people try new things. Totally. Yeah. These people are absolutely trying new things. Yeah. Um, no, I, I can like appreciate the, the talent and, and the the challenges of getting the shots that they got and, and hitting the features that they got. I probably personally wouldn't choose to do the same tricks <laughs> on the same rails, but boy, I'm a washed up 36 year old park skier and not, a, yeah. not an up and coming trendy, I assume young 20s park skier. No, well, I mean, skiing is a million different things to a million different people. Yeah, so that's a great you're all, point. You're good with where you're at. And like those, the uh, edit three and four, Yeah, those really show yeah, two the very different yeah. sides of the sport. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Um, so that's it for Top 5 Fridays this week. Uh, whether you are skiing this weekend or you live somewhere more like us and you're biking and golfing this weekend, yep. <laughs> hope you have a fantastic weekend and we'll talk to you next week. Bye.